Good morning. In case you forgot who I am, I'm Pastor Rick. <laughs> I was talking to Donna in the back, and she had mentioned that this morning was the first opportunity to see some of you in almost two years' time. So all I can say is, welcome back. We missed you. It's been a long path. It's been a path that none of us have ever been on before, but I do believe we're, we're coming out of it. I think the darkest part of this pandemic has, has come, but it unfortunately hasn't completely gone as of yet. We hear different stories of uh, increases in infections in other provinces and parts of our own province, parts of our own uh, local towns as well. But I think with the vaccinations that we are getting the jump, I guess they call it, uh, they call it herd immunity. So we're all part of the herd. As a pastor, I would encourage people, of course, to, to be vaccinated for your own protection and for the protection of others. And having said that, I know there will be some that uh, would, would not agree with that statement. As I left my wife this morning, I didn't leave her. I, she went to work. I went, I went to work. Well, I don't know why. We just talked about divorce, didn't we? <laughs> As we parted ways this morning, I, I said to Bonnie, I said, uh, well, what, what do I say? I, we're going to have people back that I haven't seen in a while. Um, like, we want, we're excited that more and more of you are coming back. We're excited that our JAM program is up and running once again, and uh, our confirmation program will be up and running soon enough as well. So we're, we're leaning towards that direction where we're starting to do things that we were able to do in the past but have not been able to do to any extent in the last, uh, we might as well say, two years. So I want to thank you for being all here. Um, my wife also gave me an example this morning of the journey that we've been. Think about our journey as being inside the tomb. And there's darkness, there's loneliness, there's isolation, there's hopelessness. But remember, when that stone rolled back and the dawn light flooded the darkness of that tomb, and resurrection had happened. Someday we will be at that point of resurrection. We just, we're getting out of the tomb. And pretty soon we'll be, we will be in the full lightness of hope, the full lightness of the day. We are not going to follow the complete devotion service on the back of your reports. We just conducted ourselves in worship, but I will begin with the opening prayer that's on the back. So why don't you have a look at the prayer and we can pray it together. So it says opening of a meeting and right below it it says prayer and let us pray this prayer together. I'll just give you a couple of seconds here to make sure we find it all. Okay, let us begin. Gracious God, we ask for your presence with us as we gather to meet, whether in person or virtually. This last year has been challenging. Help us still to celebrate the ministry we have done together in the past year. Give us vision and hope as we plan for our shared future. Give us courage to follow you in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite up our Chair of Council, Shirley Russworm.
Good morning. I am just sitting up there and I was thinking, I don't know if I'm more nervous now or the first time I played for you guys. <laughs> Both of them are kind of, oh. <laughs> but we will try our best here. <clears throat> I'd like to call the uh, meeting to order, please. And uh, we do have 25 people, yes. Uh, and uh, we will be making any uh, vo voting by the show of hands. Okay. Our first uh, is uh, the adoption of the agenda. Uh, now we do have one amendment on that. It's on number six. That should also read motion to accept reviewer's report. That was uh, not on there, so we'll make that small. Uh, uh, adjustment and if we could have a, a motion to accept the amended agenda uh, Bob Rudy a seconder Joan I might, yeah I might have to pull your mask down and see who you are <laughs> okay and uh, all in favor okay uh, we also have to uh, appoint uh, scrutineers. Could I have uh, one for each side, please? Richard Wilker. And for that side, do we have a scrutineer? Paul Heinbach. Thank you. Okay. Oh. I'm sure we've all had a chance to uh, to read through the minutes and uh, the program. And so we could we have an, a motion to accept the uh, 2019 annual congregational meeting? No, we do them individually. Individually, right? Sure. Yes, individually. Okay. Because do I have a motion to to accept those uh, the congregational meetings? Meeting in it. Oh, Arlene Wartlaufer and a seconder. Bob Coleman. And uh, is there any discussion? Could we, is, okay, and uh, all in favor? Okay, thank you. And, uh, and next again, uh, the um, motion to accept the 2020 budget meetings that we had in January, which seems so long ago. Uh, again, a motion to accept those. Richard Walker, seconder. Okay, Monica Schultz. And any discussion on that? And uh, everyone in favor? Thank you. And to uh, uh, the special council meeting we had in 2020. Do we have a motion to accept that? Was that Kim? Oh, it was uh, the the special meeting was about uh, the change in the envelopes. Oh, and the auditing change. Okay. Now, do we have a motion to accept that? Janet Heinbach, second it. Gary Wang, yes.
Okay, we are up to the treasurer's report, Keith. Pardon me? Oh, I'm sorry, you're right, you're right. Is everyone in favor? Gary, I think it's Gary, okay. Say, I told you I was nervous. <laughs> just information. Hello, I'll just try to make this as brief as possible. It's old news, but it was fairly good news actually. Uh, the balance sheet, uh, it's on page 27, I guess that's what we have up there. Our bank balance was in a healthy position at the end of the year because of various subsidies that came in and there was some sizable donations came in in the fall for the other accounts besides the general fund so that uh, increased the bank balance at that point in time. Uh, you'll see on there uh, there's accounts receivable this year which we usually don't have any but that was to do, or except for HST, but uh, we had the SUE subsidy, that, that's the Canadian Emergency Wage Subsidy, which we were applying for throughout the year. Some of that hadn't been paid yet at the end of 2020, so that's why it's in receivables, but we got it early in 2021. Also, there was a movement in our GICs, our investment situation. Uh, we decided to uh, invest money with the, uh, uh, what is it called in the place? Uh, no, the other one. Uh, LFAC, yeah. Eastern, Eastern Lutheran uh, Foundation. Can't remember what the C stands for now, but that's a separate organization in the Eastern Synod that is dealing with investments and they're having a fairly good track record on return on the, and their investments. So we decided to put the money from the uh, Parsonage Fund, which was 52,000 in there. And that was happening right at, in December, first part of December of 2020. So that changed our uh, distribution of GACs versus uh, other investments. And at this point in time, I think it has been doing fairly well. So, uh, there's also something in there called the SEBA loan. Uh, that's the Canadian Emergency Business Account, they called it. It was in the form of a loan of $40,000 that we uh, received and you had to pay uh, 30,000 of that back by the end of 2022. So we've received that money, but it, it's just been left in what I call a holding account at this point until we actually pay back the difference and then we'll put the 
the extra 10,000 in her income probably at that time. So our uh, move on now to the operating statement, I guess. The general fund. As you can see our uh, normal contributions through envelopes and e-transfers and par and the normal ways of giving was only down $300 from 2019. So that helped out considerably during this year and along with the subsidies that we were getting, we ended up actually in the plus side this year. So uh, loose offerings there you can see are very small compared to the year before, but that's because we didn't have many services for there be, to be loose offerings. Um, the, uh, we also received another uh, form of uh, contribution in the form of a stock. One of our members inquired about whether they could give the church a stock, which we weren't prepared to handle, so it just turned out that LFEC does handle that sort of thing too. So we had one person give us money for that, so that uh, increased our investment in LFEC then from 52,000 up to 55,400. And anybody that wants to do that in the future, it is a, a plus for the donor and it's a plus for the recipient and the tax side of things. So that's something to think about if you want to do that sort of contribution. Our total income then increased uh, 23,500 I've got written down here. It's mainly due to the SUS subsidy and uh, LFAC investment from that one member. Our expense side, uh, it decreased as well by about $4,800 and some of the Expense, some of the expenses uh, that increased during that time, uh, pastor's compensation a little bit, uh, postage was a lot higher last year because we did a lot of mailing the, and during 2020, 2020, a lot more than we normally did. And our, ins our bone of contention insurance, it was up again as well. Uh, decreased uh, expenses for uh, the organist compensation was a way down because there wasn't any services to play, to play for when we shut down in March. So uh, that's a decrease there. Uh, snow removal was down as well because of the winter situation. I guess it was that we had a better better winter as far as removing snow. Worship costs were down a bit as well. We don't have any, didn't have any expense as much for some, such things as communion and those kind of supplies for worship. So the net result of all of this is that uh, we had a gain in the general fund of about $18,211. Two ten seventy four to be exact. So that was a, a combination of the earn, the givings being uh, approximately the same, the expenses being a little lower, and the SUS subsidy, which we put through at the end of 2020. So that increased our uh, surplus in our general fund to approximately $35,000 to begin 2021. It has never been that high to start a year for years. I don't remember it actually ever being that high to start a year. So uh, that's about all I can say about that. Moving into the mission side of things, uh, our contributions were down about $3,500. 
but we still reached our budget of 23,000. We had lowered our projected budget from a previous amount. I think it was around 25,000 we were always committing ourselves to, but we lowered it to 23 and we actually made that amount last year. Church Improvement Fund, not a whole lot happened and not a, a fund. Uh, some of the expenses in that year were church windows again. We got a set of those done and some sound system improvements as well. Our actual balance in that fund decreased a little bit. Cemetery improvement, there wasn't much activity there as well. The result of that uh, activity is that the fund increased to 86,741. Program Development Fund, it is uh, our uh, new, new uh, support, care and support committee expenses and income are being put through that program development fund now. It started up here in the past year or so where they were taking food to uh, needy people in the in the village or the congregation. So that's where those expenses will show up and the income that people contribute towards. Accessibility fund, which is on page 33, that's a new fund that was set up during the past year. And we received about $17,000 plus on that fund during the year, but there hasn't been anything paid out from that at this point. That's to improve accessibility to the church. One thing is we have to make the doors from the end of the church here more accessible for wheelchairs. So that's something that'll have to be done in the future. Uh, one note I always make at the end of the year is the Cemetery Care and Maintenance Fund info is found in the notes I think it's on page 25 of your statement. Every time there is a burial or a tombstone erected, there has to be care and maintenance sent into a fund that is, we have it with the Scotia Bank. So that has increased to uh, 125,000, I think I've got here. That's uh, set there in case something happened with the church that we were unable to continue operating the cemetery, that there's money there to maintain the cemetery. Uh, items in concern, from my view, uh, for the future are the continued high insurance premiums and also the possible drop off of contributions. So. We're especially uh, grateful for all the people that uh, did keep up their generous donations during 2020. It all helped to make the year fairly successful. I know I'm jumping all over the place here, but uh, does anybody have any particular questions on anything they've read in the statement? If not, I guess they'll have to ask for a motion to uh, accept the financial statements. Okay. The seconder was oh, Gary Wagler. Okay. I guess that be all in favor. <laughs> Any rejections? <laughs> I guess that's passed. Then. Thank you.
see. Next on the list is the reviewer's report. Uh, I'm sure you had a chance to go through Mr. McIntosh's report there. And uh, we just have to have a motion to accept his report. We have a motion to accept the, the reviewer's report. Donna Schwartz and Trooper and a seconder. Wagler, I'm sorry, the first name again. Jessica, okay. So uh, we'll have Mr. McIntosh again do the, the uh, paperwork for this year, for 2021. Carrie? Oh, I keep forgetting to carry. <laughs> All right, everyone in favor. <laughs> All in favor. Oh, thanks, Kim. You just got to keep me on the straight and narrow. Okay. Next, we have our, all the different annual reports, and, and uh, we sh would like to thank everyone who has taken the time to um, um, issue these reports and uh, give us a view on what's been happening throughout the uh, congregation for the past year. And then, uh, is there any, any questions on any of them or any concerns? And we have to have a motion, right? We have a motion to accept all these, uh, the annual statement reports. Arlene Wettlaufer, second it. Linda, <laughs> it's all right, sometimes the names kind of leave me. Uh, Linda Coleman. And everyone in favor? Ah, I remember it this time, Kim. Okay, hey, uh, the church council. First of all, I, I personally would like to thank all the people on the church council for their good service this year for helping us out. And especially I'd like to say thank you to Janet for her six years. She's been uh, very, very helpful on our council. And I thank you very much for that, Janet. And also to say thank you to Richard for filling in for the past four months and uh, before the annual meeting. So. Okay, now we get to the election of council. Uh, we have any nominations? Carrie? Okay, thank you. Richard, will you accept? Okay, we have Richard. Is there anyone else? Any further nominations? Pardon me? Oh, we have one spot available. One spot available. Any other nominations? This will be the third call for nominations. Anybody like to volunteer? That'd be great. Okay, well, and if you know of anyone that uh, uh, might be interested or if you yourself think about it and you would be interested, by all means, we'd love to have you join us on council. Now, uh, other other business. Um, oh, we have to close nominations. I'm so green at this. <laughs> yeah. And what do we need for that? Just a motion to close nominations. Really? <laughs> I'll leave that one up to you. Oh, I've done that. That was a motion to close. Motion to close, John. Motion to close, seconder. Jerry, Newgrass. And now everyone in favor? Close nominations? Okay. Okay. No, 
Now, in other business, uh, oh. what am I missing? <laughs> yes, we have to. Oh, okay. All right. Can we have, okay, we ha can we have a motion to accept Richard Wilker as a council member for three years? John, second it. Bob Coleman, all in favor? Okay. Are we all set now? <laughs> I'm sure this is the strangest meeting you guys have ever been at, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, now we have been working on, uh, Janet has been working on getting a website set up, so I'll call, just call on Janet to come up and speak about that. So I wrote a few notes so I wouldn't forget to say anything, but it's been a number of years that we've thought that we need a website at our church, and finally it's going to happen. Um, I was, I found out when we were at convention in June that um, there is a mission grant, um, and some churches have been getting that to set up a website, and I thought, why can't Trinity do that? So I um, found out that we have... Um, a small design studio in Stratford by the name of S Zoom Design um, that was helping um, some local churches set up their websites. So I contacted Sharon and been working with her since August on this. Um, so I haven't followed my notes very well, but anyways. So our, we, we came up with goals for the website and the first goal was to consolidate an online presence, make it simple to use was the second goal so that we could incorporate our YouTube, Facebook, and audio files. Um, we can engage the congregation through our website, hopefully, and expand our community, make it all inclusive to the community. Um, we can partner with other resources like the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, the Nith Valley, and the Tavistock Ministerial. And we could also post our newsletter um, so people could read it on site. So we've been working on all those goals. Um, I volunteer to be editor of the website, and I'm going to be um, approaching somebody else to help me with that so we have a backup editor. And um, Sharon, Sharon will stay on as... Um, providing any troubleshooting or maintenance design training that we might need. And I'm happy to report, um, Sharon and I had a two-hour meeting on Thursday to go over a lot of things, and I've been submitting a lot of what we call it copy to put on the website. Um, so I'm happy to report that by this coming Friday, October the 8th, the website is going to be active. So you'll be able to go and find it if you have a computer, at www.trinitytavistock.com. And John has put it up there for me. Thanks, John. Um, so this is what it's going to look like. Um, we have, there's various areas, like, just scroll up again, John, right to the top. So you see that our history, like you can click on there, and it's going to take you to our history page. We have um, other words across there that will take you to certain pages so you can scroll down then oh and, and she's going to change that word that number were you noticing the number yeah i've asked her to change it's it's she still has to do some yeah i kept saying it's supposed to be 1832 yeah so 
Um, yeah, we have till Friday. She's got, and she's taking a few holidays this week too, so we'll work on it. But anyway, so then we've got join us right there on the main page. You can click on and find the most recent service to watch it on YouTube. And on every that on every bottom of the page, we have um, join us about our services and the contact number um, for the church office and where we are located. Yep. Oh, yes, the box address should be on it. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have pointed that out to her, so she's still making some changes, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we get stuff like that, too. Okay, um, if you want to go to, what do you want to go to, John? just to show them a bit more. Um, so that picture that she put on the front, she kind of found that for us, and we can change that for the season, she suggested, perhaps. So that was a nice fall picture. If we go to the history page, um, Cheryl Calder was very good at creating um, a history write-up for us. So that's um, a lot there. I took some pictures of her windows one day, and we're. I'm, I'm also... Um, we also have a museum page, too, so we're going to be posting a lot of stuff from the museum on there, um, which will be interesting for people to read. Um, if you click on Continue Reading, you'll see a picture of the mural I took here one day, and she's going to um, take Photoshop and remove the light from that picture, just so it might be easier to see the mural itself. She said she could do that, and she's kind of handy, so... We'll let her do that. Um, yeah, so then I'm going to be trying to add some more things to the museum. Um, events, if you want to go to events. So I've got there about our sock sausage and sauerkraut supper, and um, she thought I should put in there why it's got socks in it, so I put a little blurb about we're doing the $5 donation instead of the socks. And then Reformation Sunday is another special event we're having right at the bottom there with Bob Pope, so I've included that. But if at any time you know of any events that you want to be included on the website, you can just let me know and I'll put that in there. Try to keep it as updated as much as I can. Um, I know in talking to some of our members, um, this past year has certainly been very difficult with COVID and... Um, this will hopefully help in that way. But I'm also going to suggest, because some people don't have internet and are feeling really um, alienated from the church right now, they, they don't feel that they've been, uh, that they enjoy anything that's going on with the church. But anyways, I was going to suggest that we perhaps might consider a visioning for our church, and this being the year of 190 years for Trinity, like next September will be the 190th anniversary, um, this, I thought, could be a great, um, the website certainly could be a great way to celebrate the 190, but also if we could maybe do some visioning for our church and see where we want to go for the next years um, might be helpful for people in our congregation. So that was just a suggestion. Does anybody have any questions about the website? Like I say, if you have any suggestions about changes or anything to add, um, it's certainly a work in progress. So, I have talked to some people about that as well, and they say, oh, we're just fine watching church on Sunday morning on the TV. That's what they, they've been doing. So, To internet and also don't use the phone. Yeah. Yeah. 
and that's all on the internet. We also have, um, I have to search out why this isn't there today, Pastor, but Pastor's written um, about himself, a little blurb, and that's on there somewhere. I just haven't found it yet today <laughs> as I was looking. Um, so we have some other things that still haven't been posted, but will be by Friday. So, okay. Yes, Becky. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. It'll be fun, I hope. <laughs> Um, oh, so Paul and I have taken that. It's not going to cost the church anything because Paul and I are taking that on as, um, as a donation to the church for yearly expenses on the website. I forgot to add that. So, Okay, thanks. Thank you, Janet, for that. It's very uh, interesting. I'm looking forward to just looking at that and keeping it up to date. That'll be great. Now, is there any other business, anything anyone else would like to raise? You made the motion? Hey, thanks, Gary. Okay, do we have a seconder on that? Paul Heinbach? Any discussion on it? Oh, all in favor? Thank you very much. Thanks, Keith, for keeping me on track here. Okay, if there's, is there anything else? Okay, any other business? Okay, if not, uh, number nine, the uh, Senate, the Eastern Senate, those last few pages in the, in the uh, program are, uh, Pages just for your 
reading enjoyment whenever you have a moment if you'd like to read that okay and then uh, so I'm sorry I kind of confused people I I've never done this before so I'm a little confused myself at times but <laughs> Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> so on behalf of the Church Council, I uh, want to thank everyone who did come out today in this kind of a miserable day and uh, to come out for the meeting. And uh, the church, as you know, is now open and uh, with the proper precautions, of course, as recommended. And uh, in, it has been kind of a confusing uh, 17 months i was adding it up last night and i thought oh yes seems like it's been longer than that but yes it was it's been a difficult 17 months at times um especially having to miss actually miss two lenten seasons and two easter sundays and uh, one christmas last last year and those are special times of the year when we should be uh, uh celebrating together and being together and but now we've begun Gotten back to the singing the hymns, which is great because I love singing the hymns. And uh, hopefully we can soon add some liturgy and uh, get back to our Holy Communion. I know it's been a long time since we've been able to celebrate communion here in church together, and that's uh, uh, we'll be looking forward to that. And of course, last but definitely not least, coffee hour shall be back. So if anybody has anything else, if not, we'll call them Pastor. Oh, go ahead. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful, Roz. That's wonderful. Yes. <laughs> good, good, good. Yes, it's always nice to when you're driving through the, the countryside. Uh, I was up to Thornbury yesterday to see my son, Reg, which I'm sure most of you know, and um, uh, seeing all the different uh, uh, Halloween and Thanksgiving displays at the end of people's driveways was wonderful. And the other thing I must mention, I, as I was driving up in the, well, he's up at Thornbury, the Collingwood area, up in, the, in uh, Beaver Valley, and... Um, as I was driving, I, I thought of a song that Dolly Parton had about God's uh, beautiful painting and, I, and God's paintbrush. And yes, he's had his paintbrush out up there. They're, the trees are beautiful. So that's all. Um, I'll call on Pastor Rick for closing remarks. I did forget to do and this is a very important thing that I forgot to do and that was to to say my thank yous to uh, all the people that have served this past year and have always been present here in the church uh, a special thanks to Pastor Rick who's always here and helping us out John and Kim Ross and uh, Paul and Janet Heinbach uh, and uh, Randy Fletcher, uh, who is also our, our burial custodian and our snow removal guy. Uh, Andy Weicker, uh, Andrew, uh, Adam Weicker, I'm sorry, for the lawn maintenance. Arlene and all the ladies from the church that always helped with our funeral lunches. I don't know how many more of those we might be able to do, but hopefully we could get back at doing that. Uh, Richard and Kathy Wilker and Gary and Karen Wagler for all their work. And, of course, Kim, our secretary, who works very hard at things. And all our teachers, jam teachers and classroom volunteers. The shepherds, the sanctuary guilds, the stewards, the greeters, the uh, people who have been doing reading the lessons and uh, communion, assistant, communion assistants. And all committee members and musicians, everybody that participates. All the employees and members who have contributed free labor and all who have assisted with the nursing home devotions. We now, we haven't been able to do any of those this year, but hopefully uh, shortly we can get back to that. And uh, all who give us any support in our uh, worship services, 
and on myself, I just want to say thank you to the congregation for giving me the opportunity to be your organist. I, I truly enjoy doing it, and uh, I hope I can do it for a few more years for you. Thank you. Before we conclude, I just want to, again, and I've done this already, but it's always a pleasure to extend a thank you to our worship team that held us together over the pandemic in recording services. We had a group that would meet every Thursday evening. That included John and Bob and Lisa and Shirley and myself and Richard. We provided, we were your choir. We were your readers. Anything that needed to be done for a service to be recorded, these people were involved. So I want to show my appreciation to them on your behalf for everything that they did to keep us together over that time. Thank you very much. And I understand that John has secretly been keeping different clips, so at some point there may be a blooper, a blooper rail a reel that may make its way onto the website. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's something for the website, for sure. <laughs> I'm going to conclude with uh, go in peace, faithful, hopeful, and loving. Thanks be to God. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>